Mac Show, reality at its finest. History reminds us those hit hardest often become the change makers. This year, we've all hit crazy economic, social, and emotional rock bottoms. We all get knocked down. Something hits globally, locally, personally. It affects our health, finances, our relationships. We have to recreate a business or career. Each show, Sheila and her special guest will be sharing their reboot stories, guiding you with real solutions to upgrade and up-level emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially. Here on NBC's KCAA Radio. If you're ready to pull yourself up by the bootstraps and bra straps, enjoy a listen. Here's Sheila. All right. Thank you again for tuning in. This is Sheila Mack, your host, and you are tuning in to the Wealth Builders Collective right here on the Sheila Mack Show. You can tune into this show on all major podcasting channels, as well as if you go to Sheila Mack Show on YouTube, and you can also find me and your new free gift each month at SheilaMack.com. That's S-H-E-I-L-A-M-A-C.com. And if you are listening to this, you may be a first-time home buyer eager to leave the rental cycle or an empty nester ready to downsize for a simpler life, a busy mom who wants more family time, or a savvy entrepreneur seeking to generate passive income as you build your financial house. Are you ready to reinvent, rebuild, and reboot your lifestyle? Well, this is a place where you can discover an array of valuable free resources, comprehensive trainings, engaging videos, exclusive bonuses, and practical steps to kickstart your journey toward crafting a life of abundance and securing lasting generational wealth through strategic property investments, and of course, most importantly, individualized lifestyle design right here on the Wealth Builders Collective on Sheila Mack Show. And we have another exciting episode for you today. Again, welcome to the Sheila Mack Show. Reinvent, rebuild, and reboot your wealth and mindset for even more success. Again, I am a lifestyle design and real estate coach, and in this show, I am collaborating with John C. Morley. So today's topic is all about the importance of knowing the temperature of the economy, of people in your life, and so that is what we're going to talk about. It's all about what part of your brain controls motivation, and then how to work with others around you, how and why taking someone's temperature leads to success. Some of the things that we're going to get into is why temperature, or you could say mood, figuring out where a person's at. Why is this important? How does it take a person's, how do you take a person's temperature? Whether it's friends, a relationship, uh, prospects, new clients, uh, it, it could even be family and friends, like I said. And the standard phrases to do this um, can be as simple as, how does that sound so far? Or, does this make sense to you? Or, is this what you're looking for? Or, what do you think? So these are ways, they're kind of like starters and ways to really tune in to where people are. And especially during this time... Happy Halloween, happy fall, happy harvest, happy Thanksgiving. Hey, Thanksgiving is my birthday time, so another thing to celebrate for me. And (laughs) I am very thankful to be here on this planet, even during these interesting times, and very thankful to be able to serve on this show. Now, keep in mind that this show is also available. You can watch prior episodes and future episodes if you go to YouTube and type in Sheila Mack Show. I'd love for you to go there and give a subscribe, like, and share. Again, that's Sheila Mack Show on YouTube. And now I'd like to uh, introduce you again 
uh, to John C. Morley. And just just in case you don't know, I am, uh, before we, we um, get into introductions, I do want to let you know that I am a lifestyle design and real estate coach. I help people to use real estate investing as a tool to create the wealth and lifestyle that they desire. So to learn more about my free gifts, courses, and masterminds, and keep in mind the free gift changes every month. So we have a very exciting new free gift coming up. Go to SheilaMack.com, that's S-H-E-I-L-A-M-A-C.com, SheilaMack.com to get your free gift and learn more. And now I'd like to introduce uh, John C. Morley. John C. Morley is a polymath and passion, passionate educator inspiring self-discovery. John is a serial entrepreneur, engineer, marketing specialist, talk show host, member of the USS U.S. Press Agency, writer, video producer, and president of his local Chamber of Commerce, a 501c3. John has inspired children and adults of all ages to find their passion. Through his personality and knowledge, he gets people excited to learn about themselves, others, and of course, science. You can quickly check some of his past experiments that he has conducted by going to YouTube and typing Science Fridays with John or visiting BelieveMeAchieve.com to see many of his other creations. John will also be sharing about his new master class and there is a special discount offer if you go to the show notes of today's episode where you can find the show notes on the YouTube channel at Sheila Mack Show. So without further ado, welcome to the show, John. Well, thank you very much, Sheila, for another welcome. It's great to be on your show again. And I can't believe that uh, we have just about ended the month of October and are now in um, basically going into uh, basically November uh, with uh, Halloween just uh about ending now and uh i can't believe that you know we're getting ready for a brand new month i mean where was june what happened to july what happened to january all right so let's get into our topic but before we do i definitely want to thank you guys for coming back i'm john c morley serial entrepreneur your podcast host and podcast coach and uh, as i said i'm your podcast coach and i specialize in helping businesses tell a story that leads to them growing, being more scalable, and of course, profitable. Now, I typically work with companies that uh, are bringing in 10 million or more. Uh, they have a story that they want to share, or perhaps um, you don't know what their story is, and they need me to figure out what it is, and I can come up with that genuine story to compel others to uh, get curious about what they do, to learn about their products and services, ask more questions, and then, yes, potentially do business with them and become long-term clients. Um, so let's get right into our master topic, everyone. Our master topic today, I'm really excited to, uh, to share it with you, and that is how and why taking someone's temperature leads to success. So before we can start, let's go into what is temperature. According to my good friend, uh, uh, Miriam Webster, temperature is uh, a word that... Uh, oftentimes gets misunderstood. It's a noun. It's a degree of hotness or coldness measured on a definite scale. A degree of heat that is natural to the body of a living being, such as the temperature of your body. Um, <clears throat> abnormally high body heat, a relative state of emotional warmth, a mood, um, complexion, a temperament. That's all known as temperature. So now that we understand what temperature is, why is temperature you know, so important? What's important about temperature? Um, and I think what we're going to probably understand when, when we ask this question is, you know, why, this is my question to you, is, you know, why is it important? And if we think about that for a second, uh, let's just recall the last time we thought about temperature. When was the last time we thought about temperature? Maybe it had to do with um, our own body temperature. Uh, maybe it had to do with uh, a friend, um, a colleague, or a partner, and so, uh, or even a family member. And so temperature is very important. When we are not in a comfortable temperature, our body is not correct, right? 
our body is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit or 37 degrees Celsius. So what happens when our body is not at the right temperature? What happens? So um, we can get hypothermia. Uh, that's one thing we could get. Um, you know, we don't want to have a fever, obviously. Uh, we can have a flu. Um, and I think a lot of people don't understand that hypothermia or low body temperature is a condition that occurs when your body's temperature drops below 95 degrees. Now, again, that's not a lot, but according to uh, medical, uh, you know, uh, statistics and trainings, dropping below the 98 mark, that could be a big problem. And 95 is quite a bit down. It's 35 degrees Celsius. Okay. The average normal body temperature is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit or 37 degrees Celsius. Hypothermia is a medical emergency, okay? And it is when your body has dropped low. So before we can understand this, you might say, John, what is hypothermia? Uh, so hypothermia is a very serious, serious condition. It's defined as the body's core temperature below 35 degrees Celsius. So you might be saying, hey, John, what is 35 degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit? And so pretty easy to, to, uh, to realize that. But 35 degrees Celsius is 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. So again, hypothermia is defined as body core temperature below 35 degrees Celsius, which is 95 degrees Fahrenheit below that. And in humans, uh, it could depend on temperature. Uh, there could be mild hypothermia such as things happening like shivering, mental confusion. And when the temperature is not right, we're not right. What happens if you're in um, a room or even in your car and let's say it's too hot or it's too cold? You want to adjust that temperature because your body's not comfortable with that temperature, right? Um, and I think a lot of times, you know, we might wear a lot of clothing and that clothing might raise our body temperature. So the next question I want to talk about is how to take a person's temperature. Now, there's a reason I'm doing this, okay? You're probably saying, what does this have to do with anything? I'll explain in a little bit. So how to take a person's uh, temperature. It's not hard. Um, there are lots of ways that you can take uh, a temperature. Um, they, you can use a, a thermometer, okay? Um, and it could be put under your tongue, right? And so um, you basically place the thermometer tip under your tongue, close your mouth around the thermometer for the, the recommended amount of time. It's usually like a minute or two. And usually until the thermometer beeps. Okay, this isn't like one of these glass thermometers you put in your mouth, which is from 100 years ago. This is a digital thermometer. Remove the thermometer and read the number. It's also the ear th temperature, uh, digital ear thermometer. It uses an infrared ray to measure the temperature inside the ear canal. Turn on the digital thermometer. You gently place it in your ear canal, no further than indicated by, of course, the instructions that came with it. Hold the thermometer tightly in place until you hear the thermometer beep indicating it's done. Remove the thermometer and read the number. You can also take the temperature on the temporal artery, okay? Turn on the digital thermometer, gently sweep it across your forehead, and read the number. You could take temperature uh, on your armpit. Uh, a digital thermometer can be used in your armpit if necessary, but the armpit temperatures are generally less accurate than uh, oral temperatures. And so uh, the oral and also the temporal temperature, which a lot of times people are using during COVID, uh, you know, they could take the, uh, they could actually take the forehead or they can even take the temperature on the wrist. Did you know that? Yeah, they can take the temperature on the wrist. So you might be saying, John, is, is the temperature on the wrist um, actually accurate? That's a good question. Is, is, is the wrist temperature uh, taking accurate? And I know a lot of people that do it. Um, you know, the validity of it has seemed to be pretty good. Uh, it has about an 86.4% sensitivity. And um, so it does work. And generally, if we get a reading that is in question, we're going to take another reading somewhere else. So the thing is, uh, understanding temperature is very vital, right? Very, very vital. You might say, why? Because it runs our body. Um, I will tell you that taking temperatures um, is a good way to know where you stand uh, health-wise. And uh, younger infants, they, they take 
uh, temperatures uh, from behind uh, because it is believed to be the most accurate since there's a lot of times not a lot of uh, flow. So they want to make sure they're getting uh, the reading as close as possible. Um, and um, about taking temperatures is that we can't assume what our temperature is. If we don't feel good, we should take a temperature. I mean, you could put your hand on your forehead right now and you could tell is your forehead warm or is it just slightly warm? And you can, you can tell if you could put your hand here and you can barely feel that it's warm. Like if it's lightly warm, that's fine. But if you put your hand on your forehead and let's say it's like really warm, well then you probably should take your temperature. Sometimes um, temperatures have to do with how the rest of our body is uh, behaving. So why would your temperature uh, go up? So fevers, as we talked about, uh, there could be infections in the body. Uh, like I said, we could have a cold, a flu, something like that. Um, there are other reasons that you might have a fever that might not be obvious to you. All right. As we said, infections, uh, overexerting yourself outdoors, maybe a vaccination that didn't gel with you well, alcohol withdrawal inflammatory conditions, medications, blood clots, endometriosis um, is another one um, that's uh, caused it. Recent surgery uh, is another one. Um, also uh, STIs, uh, traveling to another country, hormone disorders or changes, cancer. Um, when should you be concerned about a fever? A fever may not be cause for alarm unless there are some specific situations. Um, such as, you know, are you having uh, an infection? Uh, do you have a flu? Do you have body aches? Uh, if the fever is caused by hormonal effects, such as uh, a menopausal or hot flashes or muscular activity like strenuous exercise, the medications will not be effective. And in these specific instances, um, it's important to measure, um, you know, like using cooling fans to lower body's temperature. And there are lots of ways to lower our body temperature. And so as we get off this, you're gonna understand why I'm getting into this. Uh, so five ways to bring uh, a fever down. One is rest. Two is hydrate yourself, okay? Lots of water. Uh, take a lukewarm bath or shower, stay cool. Take medicine if that's appropriated. Um, what you should not do, alcohol rub down, over medicating, we're looking product labels and just taking anything. Uh, a fever can be a concern at any age, and a high fever can be scary. So you might be unsure do you need medical attention. Uh, it might be okay to wait and see how things progress, but in the end, uh, the rules can vary by age, by age group, and of course, by your specific medical condition. So that's really uh, important. When is a fever too high? Um, so seek immediate care um, if you have any of the following. A severe headache. Uh, that does not go away. Severe stomach pain, constant vomiting, trouble breathing, stiff neck, light sensitivity, chest pain, pain with urination, inability to urinate, unusual rash, mental confusion, or seizures. Okay. And I think a lot of people don't know like their states, they don't know their levels. So the reason I'm bringing this to you is that just like we have to take the temperature in our own bodies, we have to take the temperature in other people. So how do we take the temperature in friends, relationship? Okay, so we have friends, uh, which, is, which is one. Uh, an another one I think is very, very important to understand is how do we take the temperature in um, a relationship or perhaps in, yes, a prospect, our, our prospects. And so you might be saying, John, like, I don't quite get it. And I'll tell you that if you understand one, you'll understand the other, all right? So we got friends. We have relationship and we have prospects. Just like we need to know our benchmark of where we should be. If we're not close to that, things can happen, right? We can put ourselves into um, a spiraling down pattern that we might have been able to manage, but because we let it get too out of control, we can't. When we think about taking a person's temperature, I want to talk about the temperature of maybe a friend, right? Maybe uh, you might ask that friend something, okay? Um, maybe it's a relation, maybe it's a prospect. So you might ask them, it's all done the same way. How does this sound so far? Uh, does this make sense to you? 
Okay, so these are some common, basically some standard phrases to take a temperature with. Uh, one is, how does this sound so far? Does this make sense to you? And is this what you're looking for? And what do you think? How close do you feel this comes to meeting your needs? How far apart are we? So when we are with a friend or a family member, we may want to take the temperature out of respect and courtesy so they know um, that, first of all, we care. And also, we do it so that we don't make them feel uncomfortable. Maybe you're taking um, your grandmother to uh, an amusement park. and She wants to go ride bumper cars. Great. So you take grandma and you go ride bumper cars with her. And she has a blast. Now you want to go on, I don't know, the tilt the world. And she's like, okay, yeah, let's do that. And they're like, uh, Grandma, how, how do you feel about getting on rides that, you know, spin around 360 degrees and could potentially make you dizzy? Well, I'm not sure. Have you ever been dizzy before? Yes. You think you'll be okay with spinning around? Yeah, I, I think it'll be okay as long as we can, you know, control uh, the amount of spin. Because sometimes in these rides, the spin is controlled by the person inside and how you lean. So, okay, Grandma, yeah, when we're inside, if you're getting to just let me know and I won't lean. Okay, so you get on the ride. Grandma, how, how, how are you feeling right now? How does this uh, seem to you? Oh, it's pretty good. It's fine. Do you mind if I lean? Oh, go ahead, lean. How are you feeling? Is that, is that comfortable for you? And you might say, oh, you know, yeah, that's great. Let's do some more. And then you do some more. And then maybe you do it for a little while. And you go around and say, Oh, how are you feeling? I'm um, starting to see double. Okay, um, I'll, I'll step back. So taking a temperature is a good way of you getting a handle of where the person is. Okay. How about in, um, let's say uh, it could be, it could be uh, a relationship, uh, stimming another, or it could be a prospect. We typically determine, basically how to determine what is cold, what is warm, and what is hot. So let's talk about cold first. So let's say you're meeting with a prospect, and for argument's sake, let's say um, you're looking for a brand new car. And the salesperson wants to see, he's an intelligent salesperson, he wants to know uh, where we are. And he might say to you, um, how do you like this car? Well, I think it looks nice. Not as comfortable as my current car. What is that? Is that cold? Is it warm? So how far apart are we from you deciding to take this car off the lot today and, you know, walking out here without a car? Well, the price range is, you know, double what I'm looking for. And I think, you know, on a scale of 1 to 10, and you might even want to say them on a scale of 1 to 10, where do you find yourself with 10 being ready to take the car? They tell you they're a 3. Or they might say, you know... I like the car. Today, it's just not in my budget. So now they could have gone to a cold status. Or maybe somebody walks into the dealership and they're looking around and, you know, they say, I want this car. And you say, well, gee, uh, we can get that car for you. What color were you looking for? I'm looking for the white. Uh, and then they come back and uh, they say that they need to get the car. I don't know. They need to get the car in a week. And you can't get it in a week. So now... That might change where things are because they only want the car if they can get it in a week. But cold means that they have no interest. We hear about cold a lot when you talk to a prospect and you talk to them perhaps about maybe upgrading their insurance policy. And they don't want to upgrade their insurance policy because they don't want to spend any money. Maybe they're extremely happy with what they have. It would be cold. Cold means that the prospect has no interest. There's not even a slight, tiny, like, speck of wanting. If someone's ice cold like that, oh, you know, John, I'm really not interested in a 4x4 four four car. Um, what kind of car are you driving now? Oh, I'm driving a uh, two-door hatchback. So now you show them the hatchback. Well, you know, um, I have no interest. Or they might say to you, uh, I can't see myself driving the 4x4. Four so now you know they're cold on that. Okay, well, what type of car would you like to drive? I think I'd like to drive the hybrid, which is the difference between the 4x4 and the crossover vehicle or something like that. Okay, now you show it that. Now you might move up to warm, where they have some interest, where they want to take the step. Well, um, um, 
let's have you take it for a test drive. And if they say to you, yes, well, that's a warm. Are they ready to buy it yet? Yeah, no. But if they said, oh, I'm not interested, they're a cold. If they take the test drive and they come back and say, okay, so um, what did you think? Okay. Um, how did you feel in the car? It was all right. They're not really getting descriptive with you. How do you feel it drives compared to the, the car you currently have? About the same. So they're potentially going back to out of warm. They might be dropping back. Somebody's temperature can drop lower. It can come higher. And so now maybe they drove the car and they tell you, you know, I love the sound system. The car's driving was not great, but I got to tell you, I really loved healing Billy Joel when I was in the car. Like it just put me into a certain state. Well, you know, any of these cars come with that standard sound system. And if you'd like, I can let you hear some of the other advanced sound systems with even more features and even more high quality sound. Which one would you like to look at first? The, the middle package, which has the, the four subwoofers, or we have the deluxe package, which has eight subwoofers, um, or eight, eight tweeters, two subwoofers. And so now you're kind of building, you're in the warm phase. And somebody says to you, okay, a lot of times you're going through, it could be a cop, you're anything. And the thing a lot of people forget is they forget to ask for the sale. So the way you ask for the sale is something like, okay, um, that sounds great. Um, would you like the car? Would you like the copy or delivered on Friday or Monday? When you get them to make an agreement out something and they've agreed to that, they have decided to move forward. So once they've made a choice, maybe it's even a laptop and we're looking at all these different laptops. And you might say, gee, well, did you want the laptop with the 14-inch screen and, or the one that has the 17-inch screen and the new i7 chip or i10, whatever? And the minute they make that choice, they've moved up the scale to hot, right? And now you're right at the step. They've done that. Great. Um, so how did you want to handle the paperwork today? Uh, the check? Cash or credit card. You don't ever want to say to them, we need you to sign the paperwork. You don't want to say to them, uh, great, um, you know, what the money is. What I say is, you know, how did you want to handle uh, the paperwork? Or how did you want to handle, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the investment? It's a lot less intimidating when you do it that way. So determining cold is something a lot of prospects – um, let's say they fall out of loop for because the consultant is never taking their temperature. I remember going into a store. I was buying one of these wine coolers and I told the salesperson what I was looking for and how big and the capacity and all the features I wanted. And he showed me this wine cooler. And right away, he took me up to a wine cooler that was like four times the size. I already told him what I needed the size. And uh, he says, well, um, when do you want to take it? And I'm like, I don't. And so because he went up the scale and he kind of cut right past the wine cooler that I wanted, it's all the way over here. And I'm like, oh, I'm not interested in that. Instead of saying to me, hey, John, I've got this up here and I've got the one that you looked at over here. Which one did you want more information on? Or which one um, can I give you, a, you know, a, let's say a demo on? Gee, I'm interested in, in the one that's a smaller one. Great. And what colors are you looking at? What color is your kitchen or what color is your winery? Uh, it's black with um, uh, like, a, like, a, like a tan uh, color stained wood. Okay, great. So probably the stainless steel might be good in there. That good? Yeah. Um, did you need locks on it? Or So you can ask these different questions. When you go to buy a car, at least a car, a lot of times the salesperson will start throwing options at you but they won't listen to what you need. Okay, so my next car I'm looking for, I want it to have GPS. I want it to have this. I want it to have that. I want it to have um, smart um, uh, Wi-Fi package so the car is connected. I want it to have the new, um, uh, let's say, theft package that takes pictures of people to get too close to the car and send it to my phone. I want it to have not only smart cruise control, but I want it to also park for me. So I want the the adaptive parking package. And so now they're going through this. And a lot of times what they do is they try to sell you on all these wheel things. But 
the first thing I said to when I come in is, I said, look, the only thing I'm interested in is the features inside the car. I don't care about getting extra wheels. I don't care about spending money on spoiler packages. I don't want to spend money on additional sunroofs or different trim packages. I want to put my money in the car. Now, he didn't listen to what I had to say. And so he just went down the road he want. And by doing that, he potentially threw away the sale. So where I want to leave you today, ladies and gentlemen, is temperature is vital. Okay. Understanding temperature and don't let it surprise you and throw you off your course. Because if you don't know what temperature is, you might miss the boat. The opportunity to get what you want might have sailed away. And if you as the prospect understand this, you'll have more power in the negotiating wheel. If you as the consultant don't understand this, the prospect's going to walk away from you. Listen to your prospect. Pay attention to his body language or her body language. Find out what they want in the car. Might be somebody simple as, hey, um, so what are you looking for? I just want a second car. Great. Uh, do you know what model? Yeah, I want to get this model. Great. Um, and do you know what type of interior what type of interior you want? Yes, I want the leather seats. Okay, great. Good choice. And how about for sound? Um, I want the full Dolby 7.1 sound system. Okay, great. Um, with the XM radio? Yes. So you want to keep getting yeses. You want to keep getting. So the more you get yeses, the more the temperature goes up. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so um, you're getting the black. Um, I'll just pick here. You're getting the black uh, Mercedes uh, with the gold uh, professional package, which comes with the nav, which comes with the additional tow uh, options included, and also comes with the connected vehicle for four years. Correct? Yes. And you're going to be... Buying the vehicle and not finance it? Yes. And you want to take this vehicle home with you as soon as possible? Yes. And you're the only driver? Yes. And in addition to you being the only driver, you told me that you're only going to be driving this mostly around local for now. Is that correct? Yes. Great. Well, you're buying the vehicle, so you don't have to worry about mileage. Uh, and um, I also see that you've gone with the... Um, the V6 engine, uh, which will definitely help you. And I know you're going to want to keep that engine running um, as long as possible because you're probably going to keep the car past the four-year period, right? Yes. Great. And I know that's why it's going to make sense for us to add on um, the, um, uh, the total care package. And so the way you do this, because the number is going to scare people. So you take the total care package. Let's just say the total care package was... I don't know, let's just say it was uh, $4,500, okay? Because uh, you get so many thousand, you get 30,000 miles. So that'll cover you for five years, okay? Or let's just say 60,000 miles. Cover the, so you do that. So you take that, divide that by basically 36 months, okay? So you take that and you divide that by 30. Okay, sir. So that's going to put uh, basically about $4.16 plus tax onto your... Uh, onto your fee per day and you'll be totally covered and the only thing you will have to pay uh would be for uh your major services after your third and fourth good with you yes great well i have all the paperwork here uh feels please feel free to read through it and just authorize at the bottom and i'll uh, go ahead and and uh get the car prepped up for you okay great and uh, if I'm able to get the car ready for you today, would you like to pick it up today? Yes. Great. Well, um, while I'm getting the car ready for you, uh, feel free to uh, peruse our shop. I have a $50 gift card for you that you can go through and you know pick up some other Mercedes uh, paraphernalia if you'd like. Um, uh, is there uh, – you might say something like, gee, um, do you have two or three friends that you feel would – uh, well, for, I might say something like, uh, have you, do you feel that I've given you um, superior service and made you feel uh, well when purchasing this vehicle? Yes, great. And I know you have at least two or three people you'd like to share with me now. Yes, great. And what are the names of those people? And you go right from there. All right, guys. So you understood now, I think after I did this, why taking your temperature is very important because then we can appreciate temperature friends, temperature relationship, temper of, temperature of taking with prospects. If we never take a temperature, the prospect could walk away. The relationship could end. 
our health could be in jeopardy. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know who I am by now? Of course you do. I am John C. Morley, serial entrepreneur. And also, ladies and gentlemen, your, yes, podcast coach and specialist in helping businesses tell a story that leads to them growing, being more scalable, and of course, profitable. Again, I typically help companies that make 10 million or more. I help them find that story or I create that story for them. And hey, friends, if you want to reach out to me, please do. You can go to believemeachieve.com, scan the QR code, or why not give me a call at 973 291 6271, extension 108. And I have an exclusive special just for the month of November. Anybody that calls me in the month of November and mentions this show, the show talking about how to take a temperature and its importance, that's all you have to do, I will give you a complimentary 30-minute coaching session to be used personally or for your business. I hope you guys have had fun listening to this as well as as much as I've had putting it together for you. And I know, ladies and gentlemen, that if you start making taking temperature a habit, it'll make you more successful. To you, Sheila, it's always a privilege and pleasure to be with you, and I can't wait to hear how you're going to add your valuable insights about real estate to taking temperature. Have a great one, everyone, and uh, happy November. Be well, everyone, and check out BelieveMeAchieve.com. And if you haven't, be sure to read my latest article. Yes, my latest one that published not too long ago. And that article is, yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is AI Tech for Spooky Style Halloween and Beyond. I'll catch you guys next week uh, right here. But in the meantime, you can check out all, all my other great content. And we'll see you soon, either on this show or BelieveMeAchieve.com. By the way, thank you so much for getting us up to 34,000 downloads on IFYL. I couldn't be more grateful. We're on a mission to hit 50,000 next and next year, before the end of first quarter, it hit 100,000. Thank you so much for helping us grow and continue to put out amazing content that empowers not only your lives, but the people you care so much about. We'll catch you. Thank you again, John, for sharing your incredible wisdom to the show here today. And I would like to again welcome you to the show. Just in case you are just tuning in, this is NBC's Sheila Mack Show here on KCAA Radio, the station that leaves no listener behind. I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and today we have another episode where we are focusing on motivation and the mood and temperature of our times. So welcome to the Holiday Motivation and Wealth Creation episode. I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and we have got an inspiring episode lined up for you we are going to dive into the secrets of staying motivated even during the holiday seasons, being aware of what temperature or mood our family, friends, clients, and environment are in. Yes, the weather is getting cooler if you are in the U.S. and it is finally time to get out our fun holiday sweaters, make some hot tea, pull up a chair, grab a pen, a paper, and prepare to take some good notes for today's show. Knowing that our economy and even our times are cyclical, just like our seasons, can help you keep your energy and motivation strong even in such turbulent times. I do have a great book recommendation. Jot this down if you're not driving. It is called The Fourth Turning and it gets all into the season we are in at this time on our planet and how our world generally goes through these seasons or temperatures. It's called The Fourth Turning. It is a thought-provoking book by authors William Strauss and Neil Howe, uh, and it explores the cyclical nature of history and generational dynamics. The book posts the theory that history unfolds in repeating cycles of four distinct turnings, each lasting approximately 20 to 25 years. These turnings are shaped by the unique characteristics and values of the generations born during specific periods. The authors argue that understanding these cycles is crucial for comprehending the societal shifts, crises, and transformations that shape our world. 
In the fourth turning, Strauss and Howe predict that the United States is currently in the myth, midst of the fourth turning, a period marked by upheaval, crisis, and societal transformation. Now, this just does not affect the U.S. It affects our entire globe. So, in the book, they explore the generational dynamics, cultural shifts, and historical events that have led to this crisis, offering insights into the challenges and the opportunities that lie ahead for society. The book serves as a compelling framework for understanding the ebb and flow of history and the forces that shape our world over time. So that is called The Fourth Turning. It is an older book that has predicted this time right on point. So you may want to look into that as a way to find the opportunities that exist in these challenging times. Yes, we are rolling into the holidays and with war and rumors of war and with our U.S. forces sent into the battlefields already. I personally feel there are no sides truly in a world that is so round. And in war, I support our troops wholeheartedly, yet I also pray for all people involved. War affects people like you and I, who just happen to be born in one place or another, and these are women, children, men, families living their best lives, they're not in control of all the political stuff or whatever is causing all these wars. They are just living their best lives. And so my heart goes out to all the people that have been affected. And I do just honestly pray for peace in our world and for this all to end quickly um, and that we can find peace again. So being aware of our environment, of our political and global state of affairs, and how this can affect our economy, our families, our world, our careers, even our children and pets feel the shift. Well, knowing what the others in our life are feeling, or knowing their temperature, and understanding what they're experiencing is a big way to help shift our current times. I truly believe that peace starts with each individual, each family, each community, and goes out to our country and on to our entire world. If you wish strongly right now for peace, then you must be peace. You must live peace. You must be in the beingness of peacefulness. And as leaders of your homes, leaders in your community, and even in your careers or in your business, it is up to you and I to each individually be that peace, to live that peace, and to walk in peace, to be aware and listen to our neighbors, our clients, our children, and to tune into their feelings and frustrations or even fears, rightly so, during this time. So we are called to step up and be in peace. Now, I'd like to really get into motivation during the holidays. The holidays in and of itself can be a joyous time, but holidays can also be really stressful. For some people, holidays are really tough, tough times. And there's the alarm. So yeah, people get very wrapped up in what's going on in the holidays. And it's really easy when you're stressed out about everything else going on to overspend or stress about not being able to spend what you're usually accustomed to spending <laughs> if the economy has shifted in your, in your pocketbook. And for many, it has, as our economy is dealing with some inflation. And it is said that inflation will be continuing. So it's very important to tune in to what matters most and to be able to figure out best ways to create wonderful moments 
different gifts and different ways to show up in and living as peace for our families, our children, our friends during this time. Now also checking on someone's temperature is so important because during the holidays there's also many people who have lost a loved one and dealing with that type of situation makes the holidays a little bit tough or different and I can attest for that myself uh, losing um, family members and especially my youngest son who passed away back in 2019 during the Christmas holidays right before our 2020 <laughs> which was enough um, and then the 2020 hit so that was holidays are still not super easy for me um, he passed away right around Christmas time uh, and so that was something that hit myself and my family quite hard and holidays we do celebrate our memories and we do work on our holidays and it's still we have our moments uh, as a family and so being aware of what other people might be going through or feeling holidays are not the easiest time for many people and so especially during this season checking in on the temperature of, of your loved ones friends co-workers uh, employees is so important now during the holidays it's not just about gifts and decorations it's about connecting to your loved ones remember the best gift you can give someone is your time and attention the holiday season is a time to prioritize connection and understanding but how do you stay motivated if you're working towards wealth creation uh, let's explore some key s concepts from the shift and rich dad poor dad so in Gary Keller's book the shift one of the things and I am with Keller Williams uh, I work in Beverly Hills and Las Vegas and I help people to use real estate as a tool to create generational wealth for their families so I do love Gary Keller's books and in his book the shift he emphasizes the importance of interesting and wisely investing in any economy that's right that's interesting because you can wisely invest in any economy I'm repeating that <laughs> because it's so important this applies to real estate to give us some insights into wealth creation through real estate I'm going to share a little bit more about how that works in a buyer's market right now real estate sales are 29 percent down for even this time of the year and every year if you are selling a property especially a home home sales do kind of slow down a little bit more during the holidays it is cyclical <laughs> we're talking a lot about cycles here uh, this this episode and so during October November December uh, we have a slowdown every year doesn't matter if it's a seller's market a buyer's market you can look at the charts it's gonna slow down because a lot of people don't like to move during the holidays and so it makes selling your home even more difficult during this time so don't give up hope if you are looking to sell your home it is important to price it appropriately for the market and you're going to make that money back in your buy one of the things that I do believe and work with my clients to help them understand and experience is that you in a buyer's market especially you're gonna make your money in the buy so you may be selling a home that six months ago was a certain price and the home that you want to jump over to or move to is going to be an equivalent price 
So when your house goes down in value, the markets usually wherever you're going to want to move to are going to be going down pretty much around the same rate during this economy. And so you want to have a real estate agent, real estate professional to help you and to be tracking those properties that you're looking to buy. You'll see there, there are homes that are down, you know, they'll be marked down 15,000, 30,000, 50,000 I've seen. And then they finally sell when they get to the right price. And so when you sell, you might say, well, I just lost 20,000 that I thought I was going to get. Well, guess what? You're going to gain that. And when you put it on a scale, what you sold and what you buy, you're going to get the equivalent that you would have had in a higher market. It just looks different. And so you want to be able to hunt and find that right home for you on your buy side as you sell. Now, there's many people that are doing a sale where you're, you might be selling or looking to sell your current home and then you're going to need to buy or want to buy contingent on that sale if you have equity, especially in your home. And so with that, it's going to be really important to have your finger on the pulse of where you want to buy, your areas, and then know the prices. Keep track of your favorite homes and see as the prices go down because you're going to need to go down too during this time probably until you get your home sold. And then once you are in escrow and their contingencies are removed, uh, that's like when somebody buys your house, they're going to make an offer and then it's going to be contingent upon inspection and whatever they specify in your particular contract. Then there's a point where those contingencies are removed. It could be they do the inspection, they find some things that need repair, you repair them, they remove the contingencies. Then at a certain point, you're going to be able to take your offer because your contingencies are removed and go ahead and start making offers. Or if you are already pre-qualified uh, for a new home loan, you'll be able to go ahead and take the pre-qualification letter, proof of funds, or proof that you're in escrow and contingencies are removed and go ahead and start making offers for your new home. So that's where you will make your money back and you'll be basically trading your house for the house that you really want. And it might be that you're buying up, it may be that you're downsizing. And so those are, those are all very particular to your needs, your family size, your lifestyle desire. And so those those particulars are so individualized and that that is one of the reasons why uh, I love to work with my clients because I am a lifestyle design coach and I'm also uh, a real estate agent for over 25 years with lots of experience also as an investor as well as an agent I do work with a group of hand-picked agents across the United States so if you are not in an area that I particularly service, I am able to connect you to the top agent and then work with you as a coach to help you with the lifestyle design overall. So in many cases, you will be surprised how many people may be sitting, and you may be somebody that's at a point or stage in your life where you may have built equity in your home and your children are grown or your family has gotten smaller, everybody's moved on, and there you are maintaining this house and wishing to travel, wishing to maybe be closer to grandchildren or wishing to be closer to uh, loved ones, or maybe you're just kind of starting out, you've got your first condo, and you're in a place that's maybe a city where you needed to be for work before 2020, but now you're mostly working at home. 
and you've got some jobs where you can actually relocate and keep the job. And so that may be another great thing to look at because you could live in a place that's far more affordable, that's more conducive to the lifestyle you want. Lifestyle to me is so important and depending on the season in your life. So for me, personally, I was able to sell and move over to a place that's like a, a beautiful luxury resort community. And so I live part time there and I still have a beautiful place uh, in the city in Beverly Hills. And I, I downsized, rented a place out and changed how I lived. And oh my gosh, it's like the lifestyle I always wanted. I, I really am truly in alignment with that. And it was the same amount of equity. I just changed it. So my, my um, state tax is, is different. It's zero now. And so that uh, my travels and my time and my uh, funds are more available to have fun. So that I can do some, some different things working from home and enjoy my free time and do exactly what I love to do and visit my family and friends as I please. That is the magic of doing the lifestyle strategy session and figuring out how working with what you already have, you can actually live the life possibly of your dreams or a heck of a lot closer to that with some simple shifts and that is what I love to do and I do use property investing as a tool to wealth creation and to unlocking the key to your lifestyle design so that is something that really makes a difference in many people's lives so to schedule your lifestyle design and wealth creation strategy session you can go to SheilaMack.com. All right. Thank you again for tuning in. This is Sheila Mack, your host, and you are tuning in to the Wealth Builders Collective right here on the Sheila Mack Show. You can tune into this show on all major podcasting channels as well as if you go to Sheila Mack Show on YouTube. And you can also find me and your new free gift each month at SheilaMack.com. That's S-H-E-I-L-A-M-A-C.com. And if you are listening to this, you may be a first-time home buyer eager to leave the rental cycle or an empty nester ready to downsize for a simpler life, a busy mom who wants more family time, or a savvy entrepreneur seeking to generate passive income as you build your financial house. Are you ready to reinvent, rebuild, and reboot your lifestyle? Well, this is a place where you can discover an array of valuable free resources, comprehensive trainings, engaging videos, exclusive bonuses, and practical steps to kickstart your journey toward crafting a life of abundance and securing lasting generational wealth through strategic property investments, and of course, most importantly, individualized lifestyle design right here on the Wealth Builders Collective on Sheila Mack Show. KCAA Loma Linda. The Legacy KCAA 1050 AM and Express 106.5 FM. The Village Mud.